Show Shawnee here with BYU Show at opening night of A Strange Loop on Broadway. Let's inside and see the curtain call and Michael R. Jackson speech. Thanks for watching. We'll see you at the show. This is 
as many people know, this is like a long, this is a long, this has been a long time coming in so many ways. Um, those of you who don't know, I started working on the show when I was 23 years old. I'm 41. Lord have mercy. Um, and, you know, a lot of people ask me, like, what kept me going and... The truth of it is, was like, I, I started writing this show as like a light rap. Oh, Ron is here. Thank you. I started right, working on this show, you know, it's, it's sort of in a dark time of uncertainty, and I, sort of like, I call it my little light rap that I built for myself, and um, just something I clung to, just trying to understand certain things about myself and the world, and, um, and along the way, all these beautiful, beautiful people, passengers sort of got on this boat and it got bigger and bigger. And I am just so grateful. I really have such gratitude because, you know, it's not easy doing, doing something like this, making this kind of show, working in musical theater for all kinds of reasons, and so along the way, so many people were such a Lord have mercy, like this whole time. Like I, could, I mean, I could go off. I mean, I could really go all the fuck away off about some of these motherfuckers out here who like put me through all kind of bullshit. And I was just trying to tell this story or be, be an authentic black artist, like trying to be for real and do something that makes you like it worth it for you to spend your fucking money to come out to the theater when you could be doing anything else with your life. Um, but I'm not gonna read anybody for film today. Speak to me privately and I will tell you all the stories. White folks who did it, black folks who did it, everybody in between. There's that. But you know what? Thanks to those people too. Thank you. This beautiful company behind me, my the cast. There's There's a story for each one of these people who I love so dearly, like Elle Morgan. Who was literally like a name on a piece of paper, and then I just happened to call my friend Gordon, and he recommended her to me, and I am so grateful that that happened. James, uh, James Jackson Jr. Yeah. Who, my friend, another recommendation, my friend Rachel was like, you have to meet him. He came to my apartment, he knew how to read music. He like was like off book in a second, and was like, my, like right, I was ride or die for him from day one. Jason Easy, another recommendation. Woo! We met in like a little practice room at NYU, and I was like, all these people keep on dropping out of my shows and concerts and don't want to sing my material, and I just need for you to actually read the words on the paper before you commit to doing this. And he was like, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> John, John Michael Lyles. who was like, to me, was kind of like a legend, like, in the making, and I was like, so, so afraid that he wouldn't want to do the show when we like, first were doing it at Playwrights, and like, and he like, was been down, and it's been like, a seminal, important part of our, our company ever since. <laughs> Antoine Hopper. <laughs> who, with the ever-booked and busy Jason, was not available. Antoine came in on Jason, Jason's recommendation and ended up like stealing one of Jason's parts. <laughs> and we switched the part around because he was so good in it. And he just brought such a different energy to the company and we love him. Um, and of course, John Andrew Morrison. saw in a production of Ain't Supposed to Die a Natural Death um, many, many, many years ago, and he and I asked him to sing for me in my first New York concert 
uh, on October 1st, 2008. He sang periodically for the first time. And he's been singing that song ever since. That's 14, almost 15 years. Um, and of course, uh, I'm, I'm going through them all over the place. My beloved Stephen Brackett, my director. Stephen has been working with me for over 10 years on this piece, who, like, agreed to work with me on it when I had two nickels to rub together, and, like, was doing shit for free, and, like, really listened to me, and worked with me, and collaborated with me, even, you know, and, and of course, through all of the, like, reckonings and wedding of the white directors, which I'm like, fuck all of you, like, fuck all of you, this man is still by my side forever, forever. And listen, and, and with like a real one. And so like, and so then, one of the people who I'm not gonna read for filth decides to come to Clarence Horizons, doing a talk back, trying to tell some shit to me, but really, he was projecting. Because his own bullshit, or believe it, I know how to stand up for myself and for my work, and, and don't nobody tell me what the fuck to do. my brother from another mother. I'm the, what does he say, Roger? You said I'm the, up, I'm the, the uptown you and I, you're the downtown me, something like that. <laughs> um, Montana, Lila, Bronco. All they said in the, in the script we're trying to do is that the set moves changes to a gospel play. Our friend Arnaldo, uh, Arnaldo took that and turned it into all of that. So when I moved to my new apartment and couldn't be bothered, he found all the furniture, all the cares, was in Long Island City and shit, fighting shit for me. I mean, you just can't do any better than that. Rona Siddiqui. background, but I'm not a particularly studied composer, and so I've always had like a little bit of a complex about that. And Rona came in seamlessly with such grace and compassion and musicianship, collaboration, and really helped me elevate my music to places that I never thought it could go, and for that I am so profoundly grateful. She is an incredible artist and, so, and songwriter and composer herself, and I love watching her shine. Julie Levy, our sound designer, is out there somewhere, making sure that, well, who had like, two, literally because of all the COVID insanity, had like two seconds to figure out like sound design for us. Um, I'm forgetting some, so many people. Jack, well, oh my God, oh my God! Wait a minute, okay. I do this all the time, Jack Paul Society.
I mean, the famous still going on forever. Page 73 Productions. Mike Walker, artistic director. Um, Willie Man of Theater, uh, doing our Out of Town Cloud, and Maria Guayanis. To uh, Musical Theater Factory, uh, and Jim Cannon Ajax, sorry, artistic director. Gave us like our first little opportunity to do the show. Um, I could go on and on forever and like, it, Count it to my head and not my heart if I've forgotten your name tonight and I will like buy you a drink. Wait. Barbara! Barbara! Oh my god! Did I take it? Barbara Winden! 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 Barbara Winden, my producer! Um, who, like, in 2016, like four days after Trump was elected, Barbara comes to see my reading at Clarence Horizons and like goes up to my then agent and is like, this piece scares me and freaks me out. I want to help it get along. And eventually when nobody wanted to do it, she was like, okay, that's not going to work for me. And like, it's partner with Page 73 to do it and like change the course of my life forever. I love you, Barbara. Thank you for everything. Also, thank you to four incredible superstars. Mars Rucker. Two people, the two most important people in my life are here tonight, my mother and my father. They are, they are the greatest people. They have given me such a beautiful life. They put me on the path to a life of the arts from a very young age. And they, I, without me, there would be, without them, there would be, I would be nothing. And so I just have to give a shout out to Henry and Mary Jackson. I love you so much. Y'all are everything to me. And it means so much to be able to share this momentous occasion with you. Thank you to Kisha and her daughter Hayden, my best friend Kisha and her daughter Hayden for helping take care of them. So I just had to think about them during this, all this process. To my dear, sweet, beautiful Molly Hager, who took care of me and helped me get dressed today. Everybody, and to all of you, all of you to like come out and, and watch the show and came out tonight. I, I am so profoundly grateful to you, and I, I, I. There's no words. There's no more words that can. I, I run out of words. No, I can't run out of words. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. Thank you for being here.